Hello, my name is Mike White. I'm Deputy Editor-in-Chief of the journal Experimental Physiology. In a recent paper, Her, Kim, Harrison and Brothers reported attenuated cerebral vasodilator capacity in response to hypercapnia in college-aged African Americans. I wrote a viewpoint on this paper called Genes Count Attenuated Cerebral Vasodilator Capacity in Young African Americans. We know that in comparison to Caucasian Americans, African Americans present increased risk of cerebrovascular events such as stroke, even after controlling for age, education and factors like diabetes. The mechanisms explaining this increased prevalence of cerebral vascular disease in African Americans are still elusive. African Americans do demonstrate impaired endothelial function of systemic conductance arteries. Now, if similar dysfunction exists in the cerebral circulation of African Americans, it could impair cerebral blood flow regulation and predispose to, or possibly trigger, cerebrovascular events. The evidence reported in this issue of Experimental Physiology by Her et al. of impaired cerebral vascular vasodilator capacity in response to carbon dioxide in college-aged African Americans supports this idea. They show that young healthy African Americans exhibit a reduced cerebrovascular vasodilatory response to carbon dioxide when compared with Caucasian American students. Using transcranial Doppler ultrasonography, they imaged the right middle cerebral artery during a rebreathing protocol that elevated end tidal carbon dioxide by 15 millimeters of mercury, while a small amount of oxygen was added to the rebreathing bag to prevent arterial desaturation. As one would expect, increasing hypercapnia imposed by rebreathing increased the middle cerebral artery mean blood flow velocity. However, the maximal rise was small in African Americans, despite similar increases in blood pressure and end tidal carbon dioxide tension to those in the Caucasian Americans. An index of change in cerebral vascular conductance was therefore also low in the African American subjects during the carbon dioxide challenge. The data was modelled and the increase in mean cerebral artery flow velocity and conductance index in response to exposure to carbon dioxide were fitted by a sigmoid curve. However, in one third of the 21 African American subjects, these curves reach a plateau after the end tidal carbon dioxide level had risen by only about 8 millimeters of mercury. That was not the case for any of the Caucasian American subjects, whose blood flow velocity and conductance index continued to increase across the full range of carbon dioxide levels they experienced. Although the authors acknowledge that the study presents data from only one blood vessel, and that carbon dioxide sensitivity may differ between cerebral vessels, it seems that an attenuated cerebrovascular vasodilatory response to carbon dioxide exists among young, healthy African Americans. As in any topic of this complexity, many questions still remain, including how the difference between African Americans and Caucasian Americans is mediated, for example, via change in the autonomic nervous control of cerebral blood flow, or change in autoregulatory or endothelial function. Equally important are questions relating to whether this difference in cerebral carbon dioxide reactivity between African Americans and Caucasian Americans is innate. If so, a genetic basis for this difference might be sought, as well as asking, when is it first manifest? Also, does the cerebrovascular vasodilatory response to carbon dioxide become attenuated throughout the lifetime in African Americans? Early or progressive change in function of the cerebral vessels could expose individuals to accumulating damage to the vasculature. Most importantly, perhaps, would be a greater understanding of whether attenuated cerebrovascular vasodilatory capacity is a predictor of future clinical events, and if so, could appropriate intervention be initiated based on screening, for example by the relatively simple protocol that was used here by Her et al. Obviously, the observations of Her et al. need confirmation by more sophisticated evaluation of cerebral blood flow, including advanced scanning techniques and further investigation of regional differences. Considering the prevalence of stroke amongst African Americans, however, the importance of the study is that it initiates an evaluation of cerebrovascular responses in this population. The field appears wide open, and perhaps uniquely, the cerebrovasculature will be heavily involved in future study as both its object and in support of the intellectual inquiry that follows.